Last lesson, we learned that cybersecurity is the processes, practices, and technologies designed to protect networks, computers, programs, and data from attack, damage, or unauthorized access. We also learned how there are a variety of threats to our computer systems. We specifically learned about the threat of malware, social engineering, and weak passwords. However, these are only a few of the different ways in which we can be attacked by a cyber criminal. Farming is a form of cyber attack where individuals using the web are redirected to an alternative fake website instead without their knowledge. The user will type in the URL for the website they want to visit, but when they submit it, they are taken to a different website. There are two common ways this might occur. The first is via infecting the user with malware that will redirect the user to the fake website. The second is via DNS poisoning. DNS is the domain name system and it is responsible for converting the URL you type into your browser into the actual IP address of the website server. This is because websites aren't actually accessed via their URL, but rather their IP address. However, DNS poisoning involves an attacker modifying the DNS server so that it returns a different IP address for the URL you enter. This then takes you to the fake website. Typically, the fake website is designed to trick you into revealing private information, such as by pretending to be your bank's website, or to infect your computer with malware. Access control is needed to restrict access to resources such as files, folders, applications and physical resources. We learnt about authentication earlier in this course. This is how users had to enter a username and password to log into a network or computer system. However, each user should be assigned certain access rights. This defines what resources a user can access, including the files they can access, the software they can access, and the functionality they can perform, such as installing software. Organizations should work on the principle of least privilege. This means users can only access the data, software, and functionality they need to do their job. However, if a business fails to properly configure users' access rights, then this will make them vulnerable to cybersecurity threats. For example, Let's imagine a business gives every employee total access to the business network and data. This would mean if a hacker gained access to any user's account, they would be able to access, steal or destroy every single piece of data. They could also install any software, including malware, to steal data. Now, if each employee had restricted access, then the hacker would only be able to cause a limited amount of harm as they might not have the right to install software or open very confidential data. Not all threats to an IT system come as a result of some clever programmer writing a malware program or hacking a network. Removable media are portable storage devices like USB sticks, portable SSDs and SD cards. These are particularly vulnerable to theft as they are regularly taken out of an office and by their nature are easily movable. If these devices are stolen, then the data they contain could easily be compromised and misused. This might include sensitive information which could lead to serious harm for the business, including potential fines, compensation and reputation damage. Another major issue with portable storage devices is that of potentially introducing viruses to a system when using one to transfer files from one device to another. For example, we might take a USB stick from work and connect it to our home computer. We probably won't have as much security at home and are more likely to have malware on our home computer. If we transfer an infected file onto our USB stick and then take it back to work and connect it to a work computer, this could then spread the virus into the business network. Software installed onto the system can cause vulnerabilities. Although most software is relatively harmless, there may be bugs that can be exploited. An example of this would be SQL injection. This is a software vulnerability where users enter an SQL statement, we'll learn about SQL in a future lesson, into an input field, which is then run against the software's database. This can be used to delete or extract data from the database. 
Most bugs are quickly patched by the software developer. However, if we do not regularly run software updates, then our software will remain vulnerable to these exploits. Some organizations will continue to use older software well after it's no longer being supported by the developer. This means there will be no more security patches from developers to correct any vulnerabilities that arise. The NHS ransomware attack of 2017 was in large part caused by the organization using Windows XP, which was susceptible to the ransomware. Windows XP has not been supported by Microsoft since 2014. All modern operating systems already have security patches to protect them from this threat. So, farming is where individuals using the web are redirected to an alternative fake website instead without their knowledge. This typically aims to trick the user into entering private information or infects their computer with malware. Misconfigured access rights is where people are given more access than they need to do their job. This could lead to data damage or theft by hackers or disgruntled employees. Removable media is vulnerable to being stolen and could contain private and confidential data. They are also an easy way for malware to spread between computer systems. Unpatched and or outdated software are vulnerable to known security flaws in a program's code. This could lead to data being stolen, malware infection and more 